Yeah guys, what is going on? It's just by here and we're back with another video. This is a video on on 8 PS. This is a new server that I'm playing now. Um, it's a very enjoyable server. It's got an active community. It's fun to play and there's so much to do. It's packed full of content. There's so much that you can go for in this game. There's so many like nice gear upgrades that you can get. Uh, what we do today is going to show you a raids guide and this is how to kill all the bosses in raids and do the home fight at the end. Um, as you can see right now I'm just killing Cerberus, I'm just doing a Slayer task, um, but it's just for the intro. On the screen now you're going to see a table of contents of all the bosses that are in the raids and the on fight. And then it will also, also show you the uh, gear requirements, the gear setups that I suggest. And there's a few like tips and tricks in the video as well that I'm going to teach you guys on how to do raids efficiently and what to do in them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do... Uh, please leave a like on the video and also if you like this video comment your in-game name and subscribe to the channel You'll be automatically entered into a draw for a hundred dollars in bonds There's three winners one's getting a fifty dollar bond one is getting a thirty dollar bond and the other guy is getting a twenty dollar bond So I hope you guys enjoy this video and if you do like I say feel free to smash a like and subscribe to the channel peace Okay guys, so if you didn't know how to get a room pouch what you want to do is you want to come north of the home area in on it and go to the shard furnace. There's an item list here which is full of things that you can deposit for on APS coins and they will give you shards and then these shards can be spent here. You can also get shards through doing world bosses and doing activities um, and what I suggest doing is going to all the world bosses that you can because they do drop a good amount of shards and then you can buy your room pouch for 5k or 8 shards. If you don't have a room pouch <coughs> it's not too much of a big deal you can bring the runes and you'd still be viable. <clears throat> but if you wanted overloads as well for raids, all you'd have to do is come to the west of home and if you want to go to this guy here, this little dragon NPC, Dragonkin, looks pretty cool in my opinion. Overloads here are in the boss point shop. All you have to do to get boss points is literally just kill a few bosses. Any bosses in the game will give you boss points. I think Zorus and such gives you three boss points per kill. So it'll take you what, four Zora kills and you can get yourself overloads. And then over time these overloads and boss points will stack up because you can just keep buying them and you'll be doing bosses as you go so you get boss points as you go every raid that you complete successfully will give you 100 boss points as well so once you do one raid you've got 10 overloads back and you use one per raid so you're always you're never going to run out of overloads okay so this is Blood Fury Hesporius is a world boss. To get here, you just go to the teleportation menu, type in the world boss, and that'll teleport you straight there. Any death here is a safe death, so you're not going to lose any items here. It's a safe area, There's you can't attack anyone, it's just a safe world boss. Uh, this is how you get the ornate shards, and this can go towards your room pouch and stuff. So we'll kill it now, and you can get some other good loot. No one got anything yet, but we got a crystal key, some ornate shards and some coins as well and that can all go to your room pouch okay so to start your raids for the gear that we're going to go through is we're going to go through the raids gear without void the raids gear with void once you get a bit further into the game and you get some more achievements and this is the raid setup that i use because it's got my max gear in it so the raids gear that i'd suggest to start with you don't have to have all of this you can de-gear to however you prefer um, to whatever you can afford so say if you don't have the Zurials you can get Arims uh, you can even go with Mystics it's not too much mage that you need to do um, as I suggest the Carol's top you don't need a Dragon Hunter crossbow or a Twisted Buckler you can go with a DFS or you can you can go with no shield you don't need a shield uh, most of the time you're just praying um, but instead of a Dragon Hunter crossbow you can go for a Dragon crossbow um, which we have there. You can use a rune crossbow to start with and normal ruby bolts and then for your vestas you can use any melee gear you've got as well. These are just what I've got to fine tune kills and make them a little bit nicer. Um, obviously I've got the fury there, I've got the occult. I don't have an anguish on this account, I don't have one yet. So I've, if I had an anguish I'd be using it. If I had ranger boots or pegasians, anything like that I'd use them. If I had eternal boots I'd be using them but I just don't at the moment. So this is the gear that I'd rock with if I didn't have void and I was starting off kind of thing. Um, but this can be swapped for a Serp, for a Nezi Helm. Uh, I do suggest bringing a Serp and you'll see why. Um, I do bring a Serp switch. 
Um, the status warhammer you can use a normal status warhammer, you can use a BGS, you can use a dragon warhammer. They're very accessible, they're quite easy to get. Uh, this is just the best in slot for damage reduction from defense. Um, the ham joint is not needed, but it is very nice just because it attacks at a tick speed faster than a whip. Um, so I would suggest bringing one if you do have one. If you don't, then it doesn't matter. You can just camp the status warhammer and use it like that. But this is what I suggest for you starting off and gear up or gear down accordingly to what you have. Uh, I do have a brimstone ring. You can use the imbued rings if you don't have one or you can camp one imbued ring or you can camp a ring of suffering for defense. Uh, whichever you have, like whatever you have, I would just scale to this gear. If you have void, I would suggest using void over this gear because it has got more damage output, especially with the bolts. So I'd load the void preset and I've got my toxic staff and mage's book and a cult in my mage and then for the range i'm using a fury because i don't have an anguish like i said um we've got all this we've got the dragon hunter crossbow which again can be changed uh, and then for the melee we've got this and then i would bring a ham joint with me as well probably just because it's a fast attack weapon but i wouldn't suggest bringing a tent whip or a vls or anything like that if you've already got the status warhammer uh, because it does poke a good amount as well so I just suggest camping that just to give yourself more food and more leniency on kills and supplies. And for the gear that I use, if we go to the presets and this one, this is the gear that I use. Um, it's pretty much the same. It just has my Tebow in it instead of the ruby bolts. Well, I do have ruby bolts in this setup. I need to put dragon arrows there, but I do have the Tebow instead of the dragon hunter crossbow or anything like that. So that is a gear that I would go through, go with and do this accordingly. Void you can get from the boss point store. I think it's 5k points for a set. Or you can get the void from the achievement store for 40 points a set. And what I'd do is you can go through the achievements. You can see what you've got already. And each achievement gives two achievement points. Well, not each one gives two points, but most of them give two points. Most of the easy ones give two points. Some of the hard ones give more points. And the medium ones give four. So easy to give two, mediums give four, and hard to give six. And so for the easy ones, like you've got baked 10 breads or cakes, which I'll take you not even 30 seconds, and you'll get two achievement points. So they are easy to get. You can get a few nice achievements, which do have some good rewards. So I suggest doing some of them just to get your void and to get you started off. You can also do the Warriors Guild and try and get a defender. Um, I haven't done that because, well, I did do it, but I got an Avernic Defender and then swap the Avernic Defender for some items. So I'd suggest go to get a Defender if you can, if you've got the time, if you want to do that. And that is the gear that we'd use for the raids. Okay, so to start your first raid, what I'd do is you want to go to the teleportation menu, or you can run or you can run all the way north of home and round here. But it's quicker to teleport here, type raids there, and you want to come to the recruiting board and start a party. Um, and then you can just start the raid like so. I would not suggest doing solo raids just due to the fact that they take so long on your own and if you're not going to be in the best gear then it's not going to be efficient and worth doing. I'd suggest getting a partner to do it as a duo, a trio or even scale it to a 4-5 man, it doesn't matter. Um, it makes quicker raids and it's so much better to do it in teams. There's a lot of people that want to do raids all the time, there's always people asking for raiders and asking for fear of blood um, and I'm pretty sure if you just asked then people would want to come along and do it because they want the money as well because it is such good money early game stage so what you have to do is you want to just invite your players that you get or you can just start the raid solo but again i do not suggest doing that until you've got the best gear in the game kind of thing and you've got the good high-end best in slot gears because it just doesn't make it viable and efficient to do <clears throat> so yeah all you have to do is that and then start your raid Okay, so we're in our first raid. What you want to do is you want to pray melee, piety, and overload potion. What you want to do is you want to spec sect on down and run north as you're doing it. Spec it down with any of your defense lowering weapons, such as a BGS, Dragon Warhammer, or any of your status Warhammer variants that you have. You can spec it down twice, you can spec it down three times, it doesn't matter entirely right now um, because your specs will regenerate before you need to use them again. Uh, what you want to do is you want to lower it north. You can lower it south, but lowering it north is a lot better just because you're right next to the entrance of the next boss room. And then what you want to do, it's not safe spotted, but it is flinchable, where you can take no damage, like so. You can keep your prey melee up just in case, because in case you're running it too fast and you take damage like so. Um, so what you want to do is stand here, 
flinch text on. Like so as soon as you see the XP drop or the hit splat, you want to run back right to that spot. Right there. You can stand there or you can stand here. I'd prefer to go here just for safety. Wait a few ticks, hit it again. Wait a few ticks, hit and repeat. Like you see I missed one there, but you just hit, repeat, hit, repeat. And because I missed a few ticks there, move forward, move back and then move forward too quick. I got damaged. That's why I'd keep your prey melee up just in case if, if you're doing it too fast. So you just want to kill Tekton, whack it down like that. In a team it works a lot quicker, everything goes really smoothly and we'll just kill Tekton fast. So you don't have to worry about taking too much damage, especially in a team. It's a lot harder in a solo but you can take your time in a solo, you're not rushed. You've not got a team waiting for you, so you can just chill and take your time. And that's Tekton done, easily. Okay, so another tip that I suggest for you guys is when you're doing Tekton, if you can do it with a ham joint and you can do it fast and you can do it like this, you can still take damage, but it gets the kill fast. I suggest doing this just due to the fact that keeping low HP is actually a viable method in raids to saving supplies. So as you can see here, I am low HP, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna die, but I'm gonna let it hit me down to where I can still survive if I get hit. If I brew there, if I get hit once more, it's okay. So I'm 32 HP. Um, the reason I say keeping a low HP is viable is because when you're using ruby bolts, it takes 10% of your HP if it hits 100. Um, so when you come to the next room like Vasa, you can literally run back here and wait for your ruby bolt to proc and as you can see soon when the ruby bolt does proc there it only takes three health off me whereas if you're full health it's going to take nine to ten damage off you every time you hit a ruby bolt spec whereas now it's only taking two because i'm under 30 hp um and as long as you can dodge these attacks efficiently and you don't get hit by them and you can do it properly then you're not going to take any damage apart from the ruby bolt procs and if you go below 20 hp and you go to say 18 hp you're only going to take one damage per ruby bolt proc and that'll save your supplies and then when you come to the vanguards in the next room you can just heal yourself up there with blood barrage and you don't have to worry about using any supplies that way okay so after tech on the next room that we're going to go into is the vasa so you want to pray mage pray rigor or augury not augury sorry rigor or eagle eye whichever one you've got at the moment unlocked most people will have eagle eye because you've not been doing the raids which is absolutely fine um, you can, I prefer to, uh, not a lot of people do, but if you move forward towards it, like, that's going to happen all the time, you're going to teleport and then you're not going to be able to move. And then you want to click away from it, and then you want to dodge these orbs. So what I do is I spec it down, sometimes it doesn't hit, a lot of the time it won't, but just one spec on it will be nice. And then you want to switch to your range gear, ruby bolts work perfectly here, they're so nice. Um, you want to hit it. Normally you can hit it twice if you time it right, hit it twice and then when that thing comes to you just move out of the way for it. You don't need to pray for this anymore. Um, so what I do is nice nice little rhythm, hit it twice, got one hit there, two hits there, move. Then you do it again, one hit there, two hits there, move. You only have to move one square, it doesn't matter. As long as you're not standing on a square that the projectile is going to land on, then you're absolutely fine. And that is the easiest way to kill Vasa and that's about it. Occasionally it will teleport you forward towards it. All you have to do if it does that is spam back, spam back here, click run back and it'll stop you from taking damage. As you can see now, sometimes I pray mage in case it does hit me and I don't get there in time. But you can just run back like so. And it works perfectly like that. And then you get back into your rhythm of hitting and moving. Ruby bolts work really nice here because they hit constant hundreds all the time because you just keep getting the bolt procs. Um, and it works a charm. So yeah, this is the way that I'd kill Vasa, and that's probably the best way to do it right now. Okay, so the next room that we've got is a little bit more complicated. It is the Vanguards. On 07, you have to do each one, keep it at the same HP, and attack it with certain styles. On here, it's a lot different. It's a lot easier. But what you want to do is you want to switch to your Mage Gear and auto cast your Blood Barrage. Pray Augury or Mystic Might, whichever one you have, and pray Range. You're going to run all the way to the west of the cave and then tag this one and then make sure they're all tagged and then if you do that and then run back here back into this wall they will all stack there um, and then from here on out you can blood barrage them 
And if you blood barrage them like this, um, you're always going to be in range of the Melia, so the Melia is always going to hit you as well. But another tip that I'd use is stand back a bit, and obviously that's hitting us still. If you move one square this way, the Melia will step out there, and if you barrage this one, it'll hit all three of them, and you're not walking right towards them. And if you blood barrage them, you should be okay, pray in range, and keeping your HP up. It shouldn't, you shouldn't die doing this. Um, you shouldn't have to eat any food. All you have to worry about is your prayer, and your blood barrage should heal you accordingly. And then that's the only way to kill vanguards, that's the best way to do it. You can bring the Melia back, like so. If you came around there, pulled it all the way there, it dragged down here and the Melia would stand around here. You can range that and kill that first, but it just doesn't work as efficiently as this does. Um, because it's a kill all three at once, and it makes it a lot easier. And this is what a lot of teams are doing right now, and this is the method that they're using. So you're best off sticking with that, because that's what they'd want you to do as well. And that is Vanguard's done simply. Okay, so once Vanguard's are done, you want to go to the next room, which is the Mutadile. You're going to want to run a little bit forward, tag this Mutadile, and pull it back. If you pull it back, like so, sometimes it'll get stuck there, which you don't want. You want it to come a bit further this way, which it hasn't done right now. So if you kill it like this, it's going to go to its tree and heal itself, which we don't want. So what you do is normally I would tag it, hit this wall here as it's walking towards us. It'll pull this way and then pull that way and get stuck in between this bit here and then not be able to heal on its tree. But due to the fact that we made the error there, if we just move it a little bit just by walking under it as it's about to attack us, it'll drag back like so and yeah, we can pull it back there and it'll get stuck but normally you can do it instantly all you have to do is tag it hit the wall and then hit back here it'll attack you a range all you have to do is keep your range prey up and then go this way and then with the big mute dial if you stand on the east wall and hit it from here it won't be able to attack you because it's stuck on this wall here um the way that you want to do this if you've got a blowpipe is you need to stand here and put your blowpipe on long range to hit it. And then that's how you kill the mutadiles. If you were to not safe spot this for any reason, if it does get patched or anything like that, you just stand wherever in the room. It'll hit you with a mage attack there or a range attack there. All I have to do is flick them accordingly and that'll be the best way to kill mutadile. It's not too it's not too hard, there's not a lot to it. And it stopped attacking us because it is in its healing phase. But we will out DPS we out DPS it anyway before it can even get to the tree. Especially in a team. In a solo it will get to the tree and it will heal and it'll heal three times before you can do anything. You can counter that by bringing a ZGS or you can use freezes, freeze it and then try and out DPS it if you don't do it in time. And that's the way to kill Mutadal. Okay, so the next room that we're going to go to is the trickiest room of them all, um, which is Vespula. And the only reason it's tricky is not like you've got to do the portal retribution trick or anything like that. It's not that advanced. Um, all you have to do is pray range and rigor. And then if you stand here and hit Vespula and you keep hitting it, it hits you back. And there's no way to counter these hits. It'll keep hitting you. It'll keep venoming you, poisoning you. And it'll keep doing consistent damage. As you can see, I've got 20 poison there. Sand Fuse or anything don't counter it. But if you use a Serp Helm, it does. And you don't get the 20 damage. You just get the range and mage damage that go through the prayer. Um, so this is the best way to kill this Bueller. Is to put a Serp Magma Tans Helm on. If you've got one. Or you can just stand and use this. And just you've got to just keep chugging brews and tanking. There is a way that you can bring it back here. And it should pull back a little bit. But sometimes it won't pull back. And if it pulls back it sometimes gets stuck there. And you can flinch it a bit. You can lure it by standing under it and dragging it there. But by the time you've done that. You would have killed it anyway. So there's not much point in doing so. So what I'd do is keep your serpent battle on. Chug your bruise. And just tank it the best you can. Make sure you keep your overload up. Make sure everything's ready and there for you. 
And for some reason, if you do need to heal and you're trying to do it quicker by like healing and not using as much food, if you switch to your mage and you can blood barrage it to try and get some HP back. Um, but I do not suggest this, I just suggest going straight for the Magma Serp Tans method or even just a range helm and chugging brews. Using void it doesn't help that much when you've got a magma helm because you don't get the set effect but as you can see I'm taking a lot of damage now and when the poison stacks on top of that you've got 20s stacking on top of that um, you are chugging brews for a good long time. So as we're nearly done we'll just keep the video playing keep chugging brews to show you how it's done when you're chugging brews, it's not a problem because you're overloaded. Um, your stats won't go down. They'll go down a little bit, but they'll just bounce back up after a certain amount of time when the overloads reboosted your stats like so. <clears throat> so, as we're nearly done, we just keep killing this, keep hitting it. There's not much you can do to counter or do this, but in a team it goes a lot faster. You're not using as many supplies. This is where I'd say in a solo it's not worth doing solos because just specifically just because of this room because you use so many supplies and you need a lot of the supplies for Ulm as well but then that's for Spuler Dead and that's how we do that room okay so when we start on what you're going to do is you want to hit the right claw I did try and do this solo in the guide but it didn't go very well because a lot of the supplies were used on Vespula and I did die on Ulm and um, so it's better to do it in a duo like I said it's really viable to do it in duos, trios, even quads and five mans is so much better than doing it solo just because of the supply cost and you need to conserve supplies through the whole raid. As you can see I've got a crystal on me now which is the Ulm special attack. All you have to do from that is just run. You can hit it in between if you want um, just to dodge the damage and negate any damage that's coming towards you um, that way. So what we're going to do is there's two of us now you want to get your mage gear on, auto cast your blood barrage and pray either mage or range and attack this claw. Um, the reason I say mage or range is because all my attacks with both and as you can see I've got a crystal now so I'll just explain that after. Um, there's a crystal on the floor there as well that you need to dodge. Uh, if that comes underneath you all you need to do is step one square to the, any side uh, just make sure you're out of the way of the crystal. Um, so what we're going to do is keep blood bright in this claw, keep our health up, keep it overloaded, make sure that's done. Um, portals underneath you like the white portals that match you with people you don't have to worry about too much um, just due to the fact that they teleport you to the other person and normally like on 07 they would damage you um, but on here they don't damage you it just teleports you so you don't have to worry about that too much um, as you can see there in the chat box you get purple red or green message and that just shows you that your prayer has been drained and took off so all you have to do for that is just put your prayer back up and make sure you're ready to go again well, as you can see now there's white portals, normally you have to run to each other but it doesn't matter because one, if you don't get to each other um, you don't get damaged. Um, so what you want to do is you're going to want to mage this, keep hitting it, make sure your prayers up all the time. Um, acid is one of the phases that Ohm does, flame is one of the phases that Ohm does and crystal is one of the phases. As you can see I've got crystal now and that's what I've got to dodge, run out of the way of and make sure it's not hitting me. Um, acid will spawn underneath you and that is one of the worst ones. All I can suggest for that is to turn your run off and just walk it off. Walk away from it and make sure it's not hitting you. Because if you stay on the tile for too many ticks, then the acid will start tick damaging you. Freeze force fives and it'll be very tricky to do anything at the same time. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is keep killing this. Nearly dead now. Um, as you can see, I've got a lot of supplies left. This was just due to the fact that we've been in a team, not just in a solo. So what we're going to do is kill this off, which should be about done. The crystal's there, that's dead. You want to switch to your melee gear and switch to your weapon that you can lower the defense with, whether it be a Dragon Warhammer, BGS, or any of the Statius Warhammer variants. Kill the arm like so. Um, and just all you have to do is melee this claw. You do have to do it in order. You can't do the melee, then the mage it doesn't work like that, you've got to do the mage, then the melee, then the head. So what you want to do, you just want to keep hitting this, like so. Because I've got the ham joint, it does attack faster, so I'm just going to wear that now. Uh, but as you can see, it attacks a tick faster than the other weapons. So what we're going to do is keep hitting this. 
And it shouldn't be too long until this is dead. As you can see, I've got crystal falling on me because I've got a red portal underneath. You just want to keep walking that off, making sure that's not hitting you. You can walk back and click like so. And just keep hitting it in between. So as you can see, the hand is dead now. Just about. So you want to switch to your range gear and attack. The reason I say pre mage or range in the start is because all attacks with range or mage. As you can see that little small dart there was a range attack and if it does a big one it's a mage attack like so. Um, you can flick these but you do have to be very quick because the attacks do come very quick as you can see there. So we just need to keep trying to flick these. A lot of the time you won't get them just because you're doing other stuff, you're walking crystals off, there's a crystal underneath that you're dodging, any of them kind of factors add into it. Um, make sure you keep overloading up. As you can see I was overloading there, the attack changed, um, so I couldn't get on there. So, the way the drops work as well, I don't know if I've already explained it before, but if you've got a 100k points, that is a cap that you can get, that is the most points you can get in the raid. You can get more points, but that's where your drop rate gets capped at 100k. At 100k, you would have a 10% chance of getting anything from the chest, any unique, which makes it a 1 in 10 chance. Whereas if you had 50k points, it'd be a 5% chance, which is a 1 in 20 chance of getting anything from the chest. So say if we had 75k points, you've got a 7.5% chance of getting any drop from the raid. So all you have to do here is just bow this. The best way you could do it is with this bow. Um, the other ways that you can do it, Dragon Bolts work really well here because you just hit constant 100 Bolt procs. Uh, not Dragon Bolts, sorry, the Ruby Bolts work very well because they hit Bolt procs. And also Dragon Hunter Crossbow works very well because Ulm is a dragon. And that's it, once it's done, you come to your chest, get your loot. And looks like he didn't get anything. I've got a 9.8% chance of getting something. And we open it and we don't get anything right now. But that's not that's not a problem. He got S as well. Obviously you're going to get some some trips that aren't as good as the others. Sometimes you're going to get loots and sometimes you're not. In this case we didn't. So that is how to kill Ulm. That was a guide there. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Okay guys, that was a raise guide. If you enjoyed that and you want to show support to the server or you want to show support to me, just like I say, like that video, subscribe. And the link to this server will be in the description if you want to come and play along, if you want to have a go, uh, see what it's like, see what it's about. The link's in the description. It's a great server. Everyone's playing it now that I'm friends with. We're all enjoying it. And I hope you guys come on and see what it's like. If you come on and see what it's like and you enjoy it, give me a shout. If you want me to help you with some starter stuff, I can help a few people out with some starter gear and some starter tips and help. Uh, all you need to do is just message me and let me know in game. You can see my in game name here. It's just Respire. Uh, so if you want to check it out, like I say, the link is in the description. The Discord link will be in the description as well. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And that is me out. I'm going to be making a Theatre of Blood guide next. And what else is coming onto this channel is going to be a series of ornate videos. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to be doing a road to the best in slot gear. So it's going to be a series going along many episodes. Because like I say, there is so much on this server that you can get gear-wise. So all we have to do is go here to the furnace. And as you can see, there's the armor. And we've got all this cool custom um, armor that you can use. We've got like the dark bandos, we've got the dark armadil, um, that just gives damage bonuses. Um, they're very good. So we're going to go for all this, we're going to be going for all the the totemic, all the upgraded best in slot gear. Um, but these shards do take a while to get and the orbs are from raids as well and we need to go to TOB to get the justice through as well. So there's a lot, there's a lot to it, it's not going to be a quick and easy grind but it's going to be a nice grind to do and it'll go across many episodes because we need to get all of these and we need to grind out some shards and stuff. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're looking forward to that series, stay tuned, stay subscribed to the channel and keep your post notifications on just by clicking the bell after you subscribe. And thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to enter the giveaway, the giveaway description will all be in the description. It'll show you how to enter the giveaway and show you what you can be getting from the giveaway. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later.